Okay, in the previous tutorial, I introduced you to some of the basic tools within Blender. That way you can begin to make some of your own primitives for Unity, because as we mentioned, Unity pretty much has four 3D objects, cube, sphere, capsule, and cylinder. There's a couple others like plane, but as far as very common shapes, like a frame, you could use that for a door frame or a window frame, a pipe. You could use that for a, a variety of reasons, uh, like a smokestack, rings. Rings are very common games, too. Sometimes you collect them, sometimes you have to travel through them. So those are some common primitives that you now have. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at making some more. So we're going to go to Blender, and again, this is what you see when you create a new project. Just like last time, we're going to delete this. Even though we need it, again, through repetition you learn. So you're going to go down to Add, you're going to go to Mesh, and you're going to go to Cube, and there's the cube again. Go to Edit Mode, click on A to deselect all, click B for Box Selector, left click, drag, and let go. Now you've got the top of the box selected. You have the Vertices selected, you have the edges selected, and you have the face selected. Okay? So, there's a variety of things that you could do. Like in the last video, we deleted the face, but we left the edges and the vertices, and that made like a box. We didn't export it, but uh, it was one step towards what we're trying to do. In this one, we're going to look at make it a pyramid. So we need to use a new tool that we haven't now. When you're in edit mode, you'll have this mesh option here. You click on mesh, and then you go to vertices, and we're going to go to merge. You have three choices, at center, at cursor, or collapse. We're going to do at center. And just like that, you suddenly have a pyramid. So you could use this for, say, uh, like I mentioned, an arrowhead, a spear, uh, you could use this for uh, a, a rudimentary roof. So a lot of usages for it. So just like that, you have a pyramid. So let's click on File, Save As. Let's call this Pyramid. And then File. Export and again you want FBX. And it's already it says pyramid because we named the file pyramid. We'll export that. So that was a quick lesson. So uh, the new tool that you've looked at is in the mesh menu. You can highlight vertices and collapse them on each other. If you want the keyboard shortcut, so let's back up a couple steps. Let's do Control Z, Control Z. So Control Z is undo. And if you want to use the keyboard shortcut for that, just like some of the other options, the letter is representative of what you're doing. So just as S is scale, R is rotate, B is for box select, well, M is merge. So it's Alt, M, and see, there's the same menu at center. So you can either use the mesh menu or you can do Alt, M, Alt, M, once that is, uh, the vertices are selected. Okay, so we're going to do new. Now let's take a look at how to make a tunnel. We probably could have done this one last time, but I was trying not to hit you with too much all at once, particularly if you were brand new to Blender. So what we're going to do is going to seem somewhat familiar. So again, we're going to delete the default block and click on delete. So click on the delete key and then left click on the menu delete. In the lower left corner here, click on object. I'm sorry, click on add. Mesh, Cylinder, where it says Cap Fill in the lower left corner here, change it to nothing, so that should seem familiar. Scrolling in with scroll wheel, clicking down on the scroll wheel, and then moving the mouse to rotate so you can see it truly is hollow. Next to Object Mode, click on the circle and change it to Wireframe. That way it's easier to select the wires, the individual, um, sorry, to select the vertices. Because if you don't see it, you can't select it. Click in edit mode and rotate it so you're facing directly down on it. See how you got this green line here? That's really what you want to look because you want to bisect this in half. 
So click A because again A selects all and then deselects. So A select, A deselect, A select, A deselect. Click B on the keyboard, left click, and select. Perfect, because you want to keep the vertices that are right on the green line. Everything south of that you want to get rid of. And so we click on delete, we click on vertices, and there you go. Now you just have exactly half of this. So again, click on B. Select the bottom vertices, then left click on this red arrow and just pull it straight down. Why? That way your arch isn't like a perfect half circle. It's actually, you've made it straighter at the bottom here now. Again, we'll click A to deselect. We will go to the modifier, the wrench tool. When you point at it, it says modifiers, add modifier, click on solidify, just like we did last time. Thickness, left click, hold, and then scroll over. It's hard to see, but even in wireframe mode, you can see there's a second line here. So if you would go next to edit mode, click on the wireframe, go back to solid, and there you go. Let's just thicken it up a little bit. So left, right, uh, left click, and then move to the right. And now you have yourself a uh, arch, uh, well, a tunnel. You could use it for, say, a ditch, a trench. Um, you can have it vertically like this for, say, a, a, a tunnel or a passageway. If you want to, you could shrink this down and use it for, say, a archway. But you could do that. You, if you want to shrink it, you can do that scaling within um, Unity. So let's file, save as, let's just call this tunnel, save, file, export, FBX, already says tunnel, export. So that gives us two so far for this lesson. And again, we'll go to file, new, So for this next one, what we're going to do is we're going to do something we haven't done before. We're going to take multiple objects to create one new object. And we're also going to use a couple tools over on the side here that we hadn't used yet. So let's do a quick recap of creating the pyramid. So we'll go to object mode to edit mode. So lower left corner, change it to edit mode. Everything is amber because it's all selected. So A to deselect. The little orb next to edit. Go to wireframe so it's easier to see the vertices that we want. B for box select, left click, drag, highlight. The four vertices are highlighted. Last time we clicked on mesh, we went to vertices and we went to merge. You can see it says Alt M, so let's just do that. Alt M, there's the same submenu. At center, we've recreated our pyramid. A to deselect. Now that was really fast, but again, that's just a recap of what we did a few minutes ago. And so the next step is now to take this, duplicate it, and then rotate it 180 degrees. So we're going to use some tools over here we haven't up, used up to this point. So A to select all. We're going to come here to duplicate. Now if you move the mouse at all, it's going to start rotating on the different angles. It's going to start, or should I say it's going to start moving on the different angles, not rotating. So let's immediately press Z to freeze it. And then we'll click enter and now we have a duplicate there you just can't really tell so now let's rotate so over here we have the rotate button now again press z uh no actually z is the one we don't want because that would be rotating on the point at the top so either x or y it's symmetrical so let's do x or y doesn't matter so i'll do x now, if you come down here, you'll see once I click on it, it changed from add duplicate to rotate. So this is just a typical add value. So 180, enter. Now just scroll in with the mouse wheel and lower this down. 
press the, the roll button in, kind of rotate around until you get it right. Now, technically you have an extra set of you have an extra set of vertices, but I'm really not worried about that because again, this is really just meant to be a primitive. This is just meant to be something to do uh, for your um, testing, your prototyping, your proof of concept. So it's not meant to be high end. We'll look at what to do with those vertices later. Uh, if you do try to do the merge that we just did though, uh, it destroys it. So suffice to say, um, there is an extra set of vertices there, but that this is doable. So let's, so let's go to file. Let's go to save as, and we'll call this crystal. Save. And then file, export, FBX, crystal. Okay, so now let's take our four objects and bring them into Unity. So there's Unity, there's our folder, there's our crystal, oops, that's the test one, there's our tunnel, and there's our pyramid. All right, so now let's take our tunnel and put it there. As you can see, it indeed is a tunnel. Let's rotate this. There we go. Now, like I said, if you want to turn this into an arch, you can just shrink this, I believe, is it the Z axis? Nope. Looks like it's the Y axis. So like I said, you can turn it into an arch. There's no reason to have to create a whole new object. You can use this either as a tunnel or an arch. You can also, like I said, use it gutter, ditch, trench, anything like that. So let's delete that. Now let's look at our pyramid. And again, it, it really kind of irks me that that's not here with 3D objects. It's like, how hard would it have been to just add that in? But anyways, now you've got one of your own. And just like any other object, it can be scaled. So, you know, if it's an actual pyramid, like, you know, out in the desert or whatever, you can make it larger. Again, my thought for this was more like the tip of a spear, an arrowhead, a uh, tip of a wrought iron fence, that kind of thing. But certainly your choice how you use it. And then the last one is the crystal. So even this close up, you really don't see the extra edge. So like I said, technically you have two sets of vertices there. And for your final graphics, you probably wouldn't want that. But that's pretty close up and you really can't see the extra edge. Um, and this also actually gives you versatility because maybe you want the top and bottom to separate and there's like a core or something in between there. So it gives you options. So that should do it. So uh, now you have six primitives. You have a tunnel, a ring, a pyramid, a pipe, a frame, and a crystal. Like I said, I really think these should be part of Unity. However, now you can do it yourself. You can just download Blender and uh, these two videos combined 30 some odd minutes only. And now you have yourself a much larger set of primitives. If there's other primitives you'd like to see, or maybe you know slightly more than primitive, something that you'd actually uh, not necessarily use for your final graphics, but maybe you want something more detailed, like a full arrow or, or a small house or something like that. We can look at that. But at that point, that's probably more than what you really need for your prototyping. That's probably more than what you need for your um, proof of concept. Again, this isn't meant to be your final graphics unless you're going for something really stylized. I think the game was called Super Hot. It was the first person shooter. Well, kind of a first person shooter because time only moves when you move. And in that, uh, the enemies you fought for the most part were these very kind of uh, uh, crude, uh, just simply red shaded 
uh, enemies. They weren't highly detailed, so maybe if that's the look you're going for, so be it. But uh, again, the, the the purpose that I was really making these for is just for basic, uh, making a simple environment, again, to test what you're trying to do. Because sometimes you have an idea, and it just doesn't work the way you would think it works. Um, so that way, rather than investing and purchasing uh, final uh, production quality assets, you can do the prototyping yourself. So again, if there's other primitives you'd like to see, just let me know. I might do one more in this series. Otherwise, I'll move on to more complex things. I'm only just learning Blender myself. So uh, don't expect any um, really modeling of 3D characters yet. Uh, we'll probably do some environmental things like maybe trees or grass or plants. Uh, buildings, things like that. So I think that should do it for now.